Whoa, 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 big boy! You're a little too hefty for this ride. Safety first, eh? 30 bills? What a ripoff! I told you. Watch your step. And no, you don't, bub. Get back in there. Rocco, living here has allowed me to explore new facets of my personality. I am a nudist. Bev! Oh, I can't believe it. Do you know what that weirdo next door is up to? Oh, shut up and mind your own business, Ed. Bev! Farewell. Nude! Oh, you're right. Oh, yes, this is disgusting. Quick, Ed, get the telescope out of the whole closet. Rocco's Modern Life is a show that has done one thing that many other shows and cartoons have been incapable of and that would be retaining its quality through the duration of the series. A lot of shows start out really strong, and a couple of seasons later, they seem to lose their charm that reeled you in to begin with. Be it cartoons such as SpongeBob SquarePants or live action shows like The Walking Dead, that just seems to be how it usually goes with TV shows. But very rarely, you stumble upon a show that doesn't overstay its welcome. You find a show that remains consistent in the quality over time, and sticks to its roots, and really what made everyone become infatuated with it in the first place. It's not all too common, but when it does happen, it's like lightning in a bottle, and in my opinion, Rocco's Modern Life is one of those few shows. Remember the two clips I put at the start of this video? The first one was from season one, back in 1993, and the second one was from season four, three years later in 1996. This is a prime example of what I'm trying to say. From the beginning of the show all the way to the end, every episode was filled with pure gold and laugh out loud humor. The show did a great job of appealing to Nickelodeon's primary audience of young children, while also incorporating subtle adult humor that those children's parents would also enjoy. But every so often with subtle adult humor comes the ban hammer dropping down from the hands of network executives. Rocco's Modern Life was fortunate enough to not be subject to the ban hammer as often as some other cartoons were. <coughs> Ren and Stimpy but it definitely had its fair share of censorship. That's why today, we're looking at a banned episode of Rocco's Modern Life that you may not have seen. I hate that I have to do this, but when I made my video about banned episodes of Ren and Stimpy, I got a few comments of people saying, those episodes weren't banned, they're on Paramount Plus, you don't even know what you're talking about. Even though you could easily Google banned episodes of Ren and Stimpy to see a list of the episodes that were banned from Nickelodeon after airing at least once, including the episodes that I put on that list, but I just feel the need to include some receipts before I get into this for those who are going to inevitably say that they have seen this episode on TV. The episode I'm going to talk about aired originally on September 19th, 1993. You can find the wiki for this specific episode, which states, This episode was banned in America after two airings due to its sexual humor. Humor. It was also banned from the early New Zealand broadcasts. While Nicktoons TV aired this episode in 2002 with no censorship and for the first time since 1993, Nick Rewind has once again banned the episode. As of 2021, this episode is available on DVD and digital streaming services Vudu, Amazon Prime, Google Play, iTunes, and Paramount+. Plus. The episode was also included on Netflix when it had the rights to air the Nicktoons. So yeah, if you've seen this episode, then you probably caught it before the ban hammer or you saw it on a streaming service which isn't held to the same FCC standards as network television. Also if you'd like to watch the episode for yourself then go subscribe to Paramount Plus, not a sponsor. There are a ton of fantastic Nicktoons on there. Now that we have that out of the way, back to the point of this video, the banned episode of Rocco's Modern Life. Leapfrogs. The episode begins in the Big Head residence where we see Bev Big Head watching a romantic movie in her nightgown, curlers, and mud face mask. Meanwhile, her husband Ed is waxing his lips in the bathroom. Bev calls him to bed, clearly expecting the maritals, but Ed neglects her by climbing in bed and ignoring her. Even a barrage of arrows from Pig Cupid's bow can awaken Ed's full-blown dead libido. The next day, Ed goes to work and Bev spends the day in her robe lamenting the lack of attention from her husband. Am I not a beautiful woman? A woman with needs? 
I just want to be loved. Is that so wrong? She then proceeds to spy Rocco out the window, doing some yard work, which gives her the idea to seek attention from another man. She goes over and gives Rocco no choice but to come over and do some work for her, saying that she could use a man around the house today. She unplugs the VCR and pretends it's broken to have Rocco fix it. After he plugs it in, she comes in with a few drinks and invites Rocco to sit on the couch and watch a documentary about the mating habits of cane toads. Which, just in case you didn't know, Mr. and Mrs. Bighead are anthropomorphic cane toads, so it's pretty easy to see what she's trying to insinuate here. I also had a good chuckle over how they animated the female cane toad in the documentary with boobs, but a few seconds into the documentary, the VCR goes on the fritz for real this time. <laughs> Next, we see Mrs. Bighead menacingly pouring Rocco a glass of lemonade when she spikes his drink with Spanish flies, which makes her go all tingly, but has a more negative effect for Rocco and results in Mrs. Bighead getting blended into a cane toad smoothie. We also see Mrs. Bighead call Rocco up to help her zip up a tiny red dress, which Rocco proceeds to accidentally rip off of her. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh. Next, Mrs. Big Head gets a little more direct in her approach to seduce Rocco. She puts her eyes directly in his face and forces him to touch them, and requests him to rub her putrid feet, but the smell is so rancid that Rocco gets rocketed up to the ceiling fan. Hey, you come down from there! <clears throat> you shaved... for me? Rocco, you little party animal. After getting sucked into the fan herself, Mrs. Bighead vomits all over Rocco. Embarrassed, she washes his shirt for him and he starts to head home shirtless. Just as she's about to give Rocco a few bucks for helping her out, her husband Ed walks in and in a last ditch effort to make her husband jealous, she plants a big old kiss on Rocco. But Instead of getting jealous, Mr. Bighead responds like an absolute jerk. You saw my wife in her bathrobe? Isn't it awful? Being angered with how Ed mistreats his wife, Rocco very mildly tells him off and then leaves. Later that night, Ed comes into the bedroom and apologizes for how he treated Bev. She reaches to turn off the light for bed, but before she can, he treats her to a little strip tease and tells her to get the plates. Mrs. Bighead proceeds to throw plates in the air and Ed breaks them with his tongue as if he were skeet shooting. She then proceeds to throw up a lamp and a toilet before they both end up on the ground out of breath. We see a fly come between them, and they both shoot their tongues up to catch it at the same time, but their tongues get tied into a knot. The episode comes to an end with a very blatant insinuation of what comes next. Oh, Ed. Ed. Ed! This episode of Rocco's Modern Life was absolutely awesome in my opinion. One of my favorite parts of the show in general was the amount of dirty jokes that they would sprinkle in for the adults to laugh at, and this episode was straight up balls to the wall with the direct adult humor right in your face. I can see exactly why this episode would get banned by Nickelodeon. Not only the adult humor and dirty jokes, but the entire act of Mrs. Bighead trying to cheat on her husband and the straight up neglect on Mr. Bighead's part, all in all, definitely isn't the kind of thing I would see a network like Nickelodeon broadcasting to children, but in this day and age, it's the kind of episode that's perfect for a collection of episodes readily available on a streaming service like Paramount Plus, not a sponsor. Let's be real, kids these days most likely aren't watching old school 90s cartoons. A streaming service having shows like Rocco's Modern Life available, in my opinion at least, is complete fan service for those of us that enjoy having a nice walk down memory lane every once in a while and re-watching some of the classic shows that bring us back to our childhood. 
But what do you think? Do you remember seeing this episode when it originally aired back in the day? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button so more people will be able to see it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss more awesome videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.